My name is Elena. I'm an educator, a graduate student, writer, and a lifetime journaler. So I thought today, in case you don't already have a journaling practice of your own, that we'd go over three of my favorite types of journaling to maybe give you some inspiration of what you can do if you want to start journaling in 2024. First things first, let's talk about why journaling is such a powerful and sometimes life-changing practice. I personally think that journaling is one of the best self-care practices that I have been consistently able to maintain for over 20 years. But it's not just me who thinks that journaling has benefits. Research has shown that journaling can reduce stress, increase your overall well-being, improve health outcomes, and for me specifically, and for I'm guessing many of you, also help you grow as a person, overcome traumatic episodes that may have happened to you, and just become better. I think journaling, even if it's done for just like five minutes a day, can have really profound benefits to your life, making you more reflective, making you understand the patterns that are coming up again and again, and maybe even documenting certain really important um, ideas that you want to follow through with. So whether you're journaling for five minutes or an hour a day, whether you are using one little notebook or five million notebooks, hopefully no one's using five million <laughs> notebooks, but it doesn't really matter. The important thing is that you're writing, that you're taking the time to contend with your thoughts. So today I'm going to go over three different types of journaling that I do on a pretty regular basis. Those are emotive journaling, commonplace journaling, and memory keeping planning type journaling. Now these are three categories that I created to loosely describe the different types of journaling that I do. But there's so much out there if you wanna learn more about different types of journaling um, and different categories or different journaling prompts. So I really encourage you, if this is something that you want to start in 2024, that you do a little bit of a deep dive on what journaling is and how you can apply it to your life. But hopefully, going over these three categories will give you some idea of things that you could do just to improve or start your journaling practice. Before we start talking about journaling, we should talk a little bit about tools. Now, I have upgraded in over the last 20 years the journaling tools that I use on a daily basis. Um, I think my first journal was something I got from the zoo, and I think I used any cheap pen that I could find. Um, but I think that that's great. I think any journal that you use, any time that you are expressing your thoughts in word or image, whatever, is useful and valuable. So whether that is an analog uh, system, whether that's a digital system, whether that's you scribbling things on scraps of paper and pasting it together later on, that's great because the point of journaling is a system for you to be reflective about your own thoughts in your own life. That said, I do have some thoughts about if you are looking for a journal, what you should kind of look for. The things I really care about when I'm journaling, and you'll see I have different journals for different purposes. Um, this journal, for example, is something that I'm okay if later on this uh, this gets lost, if you know what I mean, <laughs> because this is a journal that I'm using to just kind of word vomit. I'll talk about that in just a minute. But because of that, I don't need a fancy journal. I need any journal that I can get from literally anywhere. 
Uh, for my commonplace books, though, I really want them to last. I want them to be a record of my thoughts and ideas. So for that, I tend to look for something that has a hard cover that's going to last a long time. And I pay a lot of attention to the uh, paper quality. So this is 70 GSM paper. I write with a fountain pen. And as you can see, it doesn't bleed which is great and exactly what I want in a journal. I want paper that doesn't bleed and that is super smooth to write on. But people have different preferences and you have to figure out what works best for you. It doesn't really matter, <laughs> but something that kind of makes you smile, makes you want to grab it and write with it, that's what you should take, even if that's a black moleskin notebook, which is a personal favorite of mine. Um, but this one's really pretty. I'm enjoying it. I just started it um, because I got done with my other one, which was like a little pocket notebook. Okay, the other thing is a planner. Um, I'll talk more about this later. I use the Hobonichi Cousin, um, which I really enjoy using, and I've tried a bunch of different planners. This is the one that works for me the best. But again, just use whatever you can. If you want to do bullet journaling for that kind of journal, for memory keeping or planning, that's great. Use that. The other thing is pens. Like, I, like with journals, I think you just write with whatever you like to write with. Now, if you're interested in fountain pens, um, definitely take a look at some videos that review beginner fountain pens. I think the Twisby Eco is a great starter pen. I also think Pilot Metropolitan or the Pilot Varsity, they're great if you want to get started in doing that. So let's get into our first type of journaling, which is emotive journaling. Emotive means of or relating to emotions. This is typically what we think of when someone writes something like, Dear Diary, Stuart said I had a bony butt today and it made me feel very sad, which was something that someone said to me in fifth grade, which made me very sad. But really, it is any type of journaling um, in which you are just trying to process and work through your emotions. For me, I mostly do morning pages to do this type of journaling. You've probably heard of Morning Pages Through the Artist's Way by Julia Cameron, in which she suggests doing three pages, first thing in the morning, stream of consciousness style. Now, I don't always do three pages. Sometimes I just do five minutes of free writing, but whatever I do, I feel better and clearer afterward. Kind of like I got something out of my system that really needed to leave. I will say, if I look back on my morning pages, half of it is just me complaining and the other half is complete nonsense. So it's kind of embarrassing to look back onto. The point is not to have deep insights, although sometimes those do occur and have been incredible outcomes of that process. Um, but it's not what always ends up showing up on the paper. One thing, one caution I would have for you is that if you are just wanting to do this sort of verbal vomit, but you don't necessarily want to keep it around or keep it for other people to see, um, use, a, use a notebook that you don't care that much about. <laughs> so for me, I do keep a lot of the morning pages that I have, but I will probably at some point in my life go back through those and say, hey, can you please burn these after I die? <laughs> um, just because I don't really want that to be what I'm remembered for. I, I would rather be remembered for the things I did and the ideas and thoughts that I captured. That said, you do you, you know what's best. At times, I have found the morning pages frustrating and overwhelming, but I've also found them very therapeutic. And if you're interested in using journaling to process maybe painful events that have happened in your life, I'd also urge you to check out another type of journaling called the Expressive Journaling Protocol. This was developed by Dr. Pennebaker, 
and it involves writing about a traumatic or painful event from your life for 15 to 20 minutes over four consecutive days. This is something I learned about from Andrew Huberman, who's a big proponent of doing this protocol. But I did try it, and I have to say, just anecdotally, it made a really big difference in how I thought about that particular event. And I think it can be really useful, especially to people who may not have access to a therapist at this time. I don't think you should maybe do it in place of therapy, for sure. But I, I did find it pretty useful as a person who at this moment does not have a therapist but has gone to therapy in the past. So this protocol has been associated with considerable improvements in both your psychological and physiological health. So if you're interested, I put some links below, but I'd really suggest you learning more about it. So in summary, any type of emotive journaling is just when you're trying to figure out how you're feeling about a particular situation and why. The next type of journaling that I do pretty regularly is commonplace journaling or keeping a commonplace book. Now the internet and YouTube are full of how-to videos or articles about how to keep a commonplace book. And there are a lot of different ways that you can do so. For me, commonplace books are an incredibly useful tool to keep track of ideas, document my learning process, and create this sort of ever-evolving reference file of important themes, quotes, and interests that I find in my daily life. There's no one way to keep a commonplace book. I've used it often to keep track of ideas I am learning about, but also to take a more concerted interest in the world around me. What flowers are blooming that day? What was the wise or funny thing that my kid's friend said? Anything can go into your commonplace book and anything should go into it. When you are keeping a commonplace book, you can do a few different things. You can keep one book for all your findings and thoughts across a wide range of topics and disciplines, or you can keep subject-specific books. I have done both throughout my life. I, right now, am keeping just one commonplace book with all my thoughts and findings about anything that I encounter as I'm going about the world. But I have also created really specific commonplace books, like the ones I use for extended travels. Um, right now, you're looking at a journal that I created in Ireland where I have sketches, I have maps, I have photos, I have really detailed description of things that I saw and thought while I was there, and that I really wanted to keep in a very specific place so that when I'm looking for that particular journey, I can go to that particular small journal and say, oh, this is what I did on this day. But for the most part, I'm pretty forgetful, so I just have to keep it to one book because I've tried having a topic for, you know, music or knitting or something like that, and I just honestly forget about it. So I'm down to one book right now, but that's the great thing about any journaling practice. You can make it how you want. There's my dog sneezing. The last type of journaling, or second to last type of journaling that I'm going to be talking about is memory keeping or planning. Now, I love planners, but I also go through periods where I absolutely hate planners. And I've used just about any type of planning system or tool that you can think of. So right now, I do a lot of my planning using Google Calendar and uh, Google Task, but I also use a analog planner um, that I really like called the Hobonichi Cousin. Now I've used digital systems, I've used bullet journals, I've used those really large laminated planners that take up half of the space in your backpack. And the thing I really love about the Hobonichi Techo is that it kind of does two things. 
it gives you flexibility in how you use it um, because it has a monthly, weekly, and daily section. But it also provides some structure because it has dated daily pages. Um, it makes me motivated to keep wanting to come back to it. And I do find that I'm more productive when I'm consistently reflecting on what I need to do and what are my top priorities for that day using a digital versus, I mean, using an analog versus a digital system. The other thing that I use it for is memory keeping. I keep pictures of events I want to remember. Um, I will write about those events, but I also reflect every day or if not every day, then pretty often on what went well that day, what didn't go well, what could be improved, and what am I grateful for? As someone who is pretty hard on themselves a lot of the time, I think that this has been so useful for me because I can look back on weeks and weeks of work um, sometimes feeling like I didn't get that much done or I didn't get done what I wanted to and I can look back and say okay but you know you were trying every day and you had a pretty full roster I'm speaking to myself in third person right now but you had a lot going on so I can look back every day and see this is what you did this is what you were thinking on that particular day about how you did that day and whether or not you were giving to the best of your capacity. So it's been really useful for me um, in giving myself credit and in boosting my confidence and my assurance that I am, you know, I am continuously working towards my goals. The other thing is because so much of our daily life can feel so repetitive and Groundhog's Day, <laughs> Um, I think it provides this continuity that you can't get without doing some form of daily memory keeping unless you just have a really spectacular memory. Because I do this, I can look back on any day that I have journaled in the last year and say this is what I was doing on this particular day, which has been really useful for me because like I said, I'm pretty forgetful. It's also fun just to customize it. If you just like simple black and white, that's great. I've done that for many, many years. If you like to use highlighters and stickers and put pictures and quotes, that's also great. I've also done that and I really enjoy that. Really, it doesn't matter as long as you're doing it. And also, if you don't feel like doing something as intense as using a planner or some sort of daily memory planning system, you could just use like one of those five-year planners that has one line a day where you just write down your favorite memory from that day. And I think that that's equally as useful because again, it's just a tool where you can look back and have some remembrance of what you were doing on a particular day. Finally, the last type of journaling that I don't really do, but I really want to get into this year is creative journaling. I really dream of creating these artistic, beautiful journals like those of Dan Eldon. He was a young photojournalist who was killed in Somalia, um, but left behind these stunning journals that look at his travels and his daily life and thoughts. And there's many examples of people who use journals as a creative outlet. I think another YouTube creator that I gain a lot from is Unexpected Gypsy. I often watch her videos in awe. Um, of the, the way that she's able to use her journals to creatively express her, her thoughts and feelings and create these beautiful masterpieces that actually end up influencing the art that she creates. So this is something that I, again, I don't really do, but I really wanna start doing just because sometimes I can get really in my head and cerebral about stuff and I think creative journaling is a great outlet and a way to get in touch with your intuition more than just your thoughts and ideas. 
Journaling is such a rich and diverse practice. And I really think that whatever type of journaling works for you is the journaling that you should do. Um, but I hope that by going over these three different types of journaling that I do, that maybe I can give some inspiration um, to keep up or start your journaling practice in 2024. I really have gotten so much from journaling and I think it is such a valuable part of my life that I really want more people to get interested. So if you'd like more videos like that, please tell me below and tell me what types of journaling that you do. I would love to hear. Otherwise, I will see you later and I hope you have a wonderful day.